Hey everyone. Amen. It's good to be in God's service one more time. Now I'm going to tell on myself. I'm good at doing that. Okay. I left my Bible at home. My notes. So if we get anything out of this, it'll be Jesus. Amen. It'll be Jesus anyway, but you know. And uh, it's what you get for getting in a hurry. I feel good. Amen. I feel good. Hallelujah. But something good is going to come out of this. Amen. I uh, thought about this earlier yesterday and today, I guess. This crossed my mind. We was having church service in Dayton, Kentucky, when Brother Puckett was pastor there. And this woman would come to church. She stood up and she said, I'm in love. I'm in love with Jesus. How many of us in this building today is in love with Jesus? Amen. How many of us are willing to turn our back on the things of this world? Amen. I want to preach to you by the grace of God about faithful people. Amen. That stood the test. Had a good testimony. I hope I have a good testimony. Amen. But I want to please God. Thank God. I thought about some things yesterday about love, and I thought, well, love will do a lot of things. Amen. It'll cause us, when we get the love of God in our heart, in our soul, amen. And uh, when we really get the Holy Ghost and want to live for Jesus, the things of this world will not have, will draw any attention to, uh, to us away from Christ. Now, some folks have not. Now, you can't hide from God. My dad uh, went to church, but he smoked cigarettes. Now, he tried to hide from the preacher. He couldn't hide from him. You can't hide from God. You can't hide anything from God. Amen. Heard a man say one time, he said, well, God don't know where we're going to live in eternity. That was the dumbest thing a man could ever say. Amen. Because he knows where we're going to live. Amen. He sees the end or the beginning from the end or the end from the beginning, whichever. But he knows where we're going to live. And I thought, oh, God. Uh, John, do you see me in that crowd, a man that no man can number? I hope you did. I want to go there. I want to be there. I want to be here and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Now, folks, I know you think I have some things that... Uh, uh, my own personal conviction, I, my conviction is from the Word of God. Amen. And uh, I don't try to uh, impose things on people. I, I thought, uh, well, I'm going to get you know, Let's pray. Let's pray. God Almighty, we thank and praise you for this opportunity to come before you. We're asking you, O oh God, that you would move direct, and God, that your will be done. O oh God, that you would speak through me to these precious souls that might hear and receive your word. Oh, God, did tell you might get something out of it. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Oh, thank God. As far as I know, none of you women cut your hair. I thought about a woman who goes to church, been going to church for years. I mentioned to her first chapter of Corinthians, the 11th chapter. It tells you about cutting your hair, and she said, I don't believe that. There was a story one time, a man, uh, this woman went up to this preacher and kind of asked him about certain things in the scriptures and that, and he said, oh, I don't believe that, so she can tear pages out. Next thing you know, she just had the cover. She said, if you don't believe it, we don't need it. Amen. But I want you to know, you got to believe the word of God. Amen. Now, you may get mad at the preacher. Or whatever, because preaching the word, but hey, it's God that you're getting mad at. You get mad at me. 
some folks do get mad at me. Amen. But that's all right. You know, things when I thought about being faithful, and we're going to be talking about uh, being faithful. Amen. A great cloud of witness. Amen. That's what I want to be, a witness for Jesus. In fact, I had an opportunity this morning to give some men some tracks at Ninth and Ann. Amen. Waiting on Hester. Amen. So I thought, ain't no sense wasting time. I just got out and give these men some tracks. I said, do they have church service here? No, oh, this is A. <laughs> Amen. But I can truly say I'm in love with Jesus. Hallelujah. He's done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. He's done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. He's done so much for me. Now I think about, I'm going to read my scripture in a minute, but I'm going to tell you this. I think about when I was sitting on that bar stool, all them people around me, God chose me. God chose me. But Mark, I want you to know, that's a good feeling. You know, it wasn't at the time. But I, after I sat there and kept drinking, I couldn't hear anything. I was blessed to get home. But he chose me. He never gave up. Amen. Well, uh, Hebrews chapter 12. Wherefore, seeing me also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which, be, which so easily besets us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and set down at the right hand of the throne of God, for considering him that endured with such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. So great a cloud of witness. Folks, I want you to know there are men in the word of God that went through some things. Amen. And they suffered. And I thought, and this thing of we could make it. There's no reason why we can't. When folks quit going to church, it's because they're drawn away after their own lust. But if we have the Holy Ghost, amen, in our life, we can make it. Now, there's no excuse for us not to make it to heaven. When we got the power of God in our life, amen, we could drink it, we could smoke it, we could curse it and lie it, amen, we'd be honest and tell the truth, amen. And so, uh, I know, I thought, well, we can make it. And when I read the Word of God and read some, what some things the men went through, and it, it kind of excites me a little bit. I think about Joseph. Amen. The things he went through. Amen. Because God chose him, gave him dreams, his brother hated him. Amen. Found in uh, Genesis the 34th chapter. Amen. And uh, and he would tell them about his dream. And they envied him. You know what I mean? His dad loved him more than he did than any other kids because he was Rachel's son. And he loved Rachel more than he did Leah. Amen. And so he made Joseph a coat of many colors. Now, Joseph was not an arrogant person. He had God in his life. Whatever came his way, he took it. Amen. I thought about when his brothers put him in that pit and they were going to kill him, but God had other plans. He was going to use Joseph. Amen. And so then, therefore, amen, they thought, they saw these uh, folks coming down, you know, going to go to Egypt and and sell some stuff, 
They said, why don't we just sell Joseph to these people, amen, and let him go down to Egypt. They got him out of that pit. You know, now, I know that Joseph had his hands tied like this. He was looking back at his brothers, one that should love him, one should protect him, but to hate him because he had the love of God. He loved God. Those other brothers, they, they were deceivers and everything else. Amen. They wasn't fair to their dad. They weren't honest or anything like that. Amen. But then, old Joseph, you know, he, uh, he held in there. He went to Egypt. God blessed him. He went to Potiphar's house, and he was blessed above everybody else. Potiphar just left it in his hand. Hey, Joseph, what do you say, buddy? We'll go along with it. But well, the enemy wasn't satisfied with that, right? He saw Joseph was just, amen, he was comfortable because what he was doing, he was doing it as unto God. Amen. So I want you to know if we do things, Amen. We ought to do them as unto God. Amen. I tell them on my job. I said, I'm doing this unto God. I want to make him look good. They love me. I remember one time working on a job. And uh, I've been there almost 90 days. I was fixing to get in the union. They was going to give me a 10-cent raise. I went to the former. I said, don't you think I'm... Deserve more than ten cents. I got a two dollar raise that year. <laughs> Can't beat that. You know what I mean? Because I found favor with this foreman. He always told me, he said, Now, Ronnie, he said, I'm gonna convert you. I said, Yeah, the day you convert me, I'll be lost. If I don't believe this truth, I'll be lost. Because this is the only thing that will save you. You can't be saved any other way. Amen. Christ died on Calvary. He gave Peter the plans of uh, salvation, and you can't be saved anywhere. You're what they say. Yes, we're saved by grace. It's the grace of God. He allows us to get baptized in his name, filled with his spirit. Amen. And walk according to the book. Not according to some preacher, but to the book. Amen. You read it. It'll tell you what to do, what not to do. What to wear, what not to wear. Places to go, not places to go. And places not to go. I thought, amen. It says, the great cloud of witness is composed of people described in chapter 11. Their faithfulness is constant encouragement to us. We do not struggle alone. And we are not the first to struggle with the problem that we face. Others have run the race and won. Their witness stirs us to run and win. Also, what an inspiration heritage we have. As we read the Word of God and as we see the things they went through with, amen, it encourages us we can make it. Amen. To run. Sometimes it does get rough. Sometimes we do struggle. Not like they did, but we all have our problems in certain ways. And we wonder if I can make it. Sometimes... Uh, you know, man, I wish I was dead. I wish I was out of here. I can't, all this stuff coming on and on and on, you know. I have asked the Lord. Now, you may think this is my weakness, but that's between you and Jesus. The things that are coming up on this world, I have asked the Lord. Because he said we could. He said, ask that you escape the things that are coming up on this world. I said, oh, God, let me escape the things. But they're coming. This thing in Cincinnati. The thing in Connecticut. It's going on. It ought to stir our heart. It ought to draw us closer to God because he's fixing to come again. He said these things would come. He said in the last days there will be perilous times. This dangerous time. You're not safe anywhere. I don't care where you go. Not even in your own home. Not even somebody can come in here and just start shooting away. Amen. And they've done it before. We've been blessed because God protect us. God's hand is upon us. He don't allow things to happen to us yet, but the Bible says Satan's going to overcome the saints. Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? I read, 
uh, the book that Brother Root gave me, the Bible, rather, and uh, I was reading this chapter and verse, rather, and I read uh, down below like this does some things, and it says about the race, it said when these people were fixing to run a race, they got naked. They laid everything aside. Yeah, they got naked, almost naked. Amen. They wanted to get rid of the weight. And that's why the Bible said, let's lay aside every weight. Amen. And I thought, you know, and they, they think it's funny, but I thought, I wonder how many apostolics went down and saw that race after they got converted. <laughs> they seen, that's why we don't go swimming in public places. That's why we don't go to the beach. Amen. It causes you to have trouble. And so we stay away from them. That's why we preach against it. You know? Some do anyway. Others don't preach against anything. Hard. That's why we ask them to stay away from those places. We don't go mix bathing. Amen. Because we're trying to please God. I thought, and I thought as I read this, and I, I had another uh, thought that I was going to work on, but it seemed like the Lord had changed my mind to this yesterday, and I was reading and got some verses out, and I thought, you know, uh, here in the 11th chapter of uh, it talks about all these witnesses. Amen. And so then, they're uh, uh, talking about the things they went through, and I mentioned about Joseph, how he, amen, uh, went through some, I thought, and I, and I don't know about you all, but I I thought about, I like to have that kind of spirit that Joseph had. Because everything he did was for God. They put him in prison. And he became the best jailer they had. That old guard just sat back there. Joseph, you take care of it, buddy. You're doing all right. You're doing a good job. Amen? And he did. Because, you know, he had a dream. God gave him a dream. Two of them. Amen. So he held on to that dream. I have a dream. Walk in the streets of gold. Amen. Lord willing. Amen. I'm going to walk the streets of gold. I'm not, by the grace of God, I'm not going to let the things of this world distract me from God. Now, I do have some problems. And I'm praying God will help me with it. <coughs> That's Glenn. <coughs> <coughs> But I'm praying, God, you know, I'll leave with this child. I want him to see him converted. I want him to see him get baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. I want him to see him preach the word of God. He may not do it, but I want it, that's what I want to see. So I take some things from him. Okay, he's a very arrogant individual. Amen. And I take things, and I call him. But i got to see him so of everything else. I gotta see him safe. I gotta see my family safe. But here they were raised in the truth. And had someone say, I'll never go back to an apostolic church again. Well they'll eat those words. I was walking and I sat down next to a man or speedway where I live and started getting the car and he said, I don't want that. And I said, Well, you will one day. You'll be uh, you'll be one Jesus' name filled with the Holy Ghost. I think about Noah, how faithful Noah was. God chose him out of all of those people there. I thought he, 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 uh, he directed his children, amen, to love God, his in-law, his wife. They all was faithful to God. Amen. And God used him. Hey, Noah, I want you to build me an ark. He said, okay, Lord, I'm building you an ark. Amen. His wife, his uh, in-laws, his, his uh, sons, them, got in there and they helped build that boat. He gave them 120 years to repent. They no doubt made fun of him. They ridiculed him, whatever, but they kept right on working. I'm working on a building for my Lord. The same way with us. Sometimes folks, amen, make fun of us. You know, I got a here a while back. You know, I had a man just come to work every day and just 
beat my arm, make them so sore, I can hardly raise them. Amen. But you know what? I never gave up on Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Amen. I never gave up on, and he never gave up on me. Amen. I'm going to just, I'm going to, oh, if God's in this, he'll, he'll work it out. Amen. Woo! I want to go to heaven with you folks. Amen. I want to walk the streets of gold with you. Amen. You know, I don't preach, amen, just to be preaching. Thank God I can preach anywhere. I can preach on the street corners. I preach in rest homes and jails. Amen. But I want to go to heaven with you folks. I want us all to make it. We can make it by the grace of God. It's the love of God. It's the love of God that he chose us. It's the love of God. Amen. Allowed you to be in the house of God to worship and magnify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. He's the only one that you can look unto. Amen. There's nobody else. There's nobody else that you can trust. Amen. This pleasure, this world, amen, is not worth in living in eternity with a lake of stand pain as it is. Why do I want to go to hell and have more pain? Amen? Praise God. I feel good. I feel good. Just to know I've been redeemed makes me feel good. Hallelujah. I feel good. Amen. i tell you what. You look at me and you wonder how in the world would God want a creature like that? Amen. So it goes to show you, amen, he loves the world. Don't make any difference. Black, white, yellow, red. He loves the world. We all have the same color of blood. Amen. Thank God. So therefore, he loves us. And I thought, you know, I read this about the great cloud of witness. Folks. And he went through, like Noah, he went through some things. Can you imagine? I don't know what kind of tools he had. Amen. God just sort of helped him to form that old boat. You know, sometimes you had to suck him in water for wood to, to be bent. And maybe he did that. But I want you to know, he got done. Amen. The day came. When he, when God began to call male and female, not male and male, he called male and female. Because two males can't populate the world. Two females can't populate the world. Amen. So he called male and female. And they wanted in that ark. Amen. And then they, uh, then God, boom, closed that door. And all of a sudden, it started raining. Then the people begin to try to get in the boat. In fact, the boat was so tall, they couldn't even climb it. They couldn't know where to get a hold of it. They were begging, crying, pleading. Amen. It's like anybody else. But the market's here, you're hurting, amen, or whatever. You cry out to God. Amen. Everyone, I'm driving. <laughs> My wife says, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Well, one thing about it, he keeps her praying. <laughs> I'll let you know. Amen. Uh, you watch after his own. Thank God. Amen. I, I thought you know about that, and I thought you know they. I told that man, I said, Well, there'll be a day you wish you had accepted us. Amen. All the begging, screaming, and crying, and pleading won't do any good. Today, he's our Savior. Tomorrow, he may be our judge. I heard a story. This guy, this uh, man helped this young man out. And, uh, you know, and later on, this young man got in trouble, faced this judge, and he recognized the judge. Oh, he said, hey, he said, I remember you. He said, you helped me out. He thought by knowing him, he would be a little lenient on him. He said, yeah, then I was your savior. Today, I'm your judge. Amen. 
And that's what Jesus is going to be. Today, he's our Savior. He's a lover of our souls. But if we don't make it, the Bible says he's going to laugh at our calamity. All the begging and pleading, I won't do any good. Folks, if you look at it, look at the things that are going on in this world now, the Lord is fixing to come. Amen. Our government's trying to take God out of our country, and they've done that, but they'll never get rid of him. Like I told that man earlier, I said, he'll be here when the world's on fire. Amen. When folks are dancing around in them flames, he'll still be here. Now, folks can make fun of it. They can deny it. They can say, oh, I don't believe that. Well, but you will believe it. It'll be too late. Then it'll be too late. What's the matter with Jesus? He wants to give you peace, joy, happiness. Amen. We've had some things happen that I didn't think would ever happen. Amen. But being faithful, God's faithful. Amen. It's like I said it. I got that job, you know, and I uh, wound up giving me a, a $2 raise the first year I worked there because I was faithful. They liked my work. They liked me being there on time every day. They liked when, I, when they tell me to do something, I would do it. Amen. Because it was my job. If they told me to sweep the floor, hey, ain't no problem. I'm getting paid uh, $13 an hour. Amen. To push that broom. I'm not putting a, sticking a rod down well in something. I'm just pushing the whole broom. Amen. Uh, they tell me to clean the toilet up. Give me the brush. Amen. Because I did it under Jesus. Praise God. The last job I had, the one of the uh, uh, managers come to me, man, they were all excited and everything. The man said, they get a they port every three months or whatever. You know what I mean? And I got to a place where I could just do anything I wanted to do. They never asked me what I'd done, how much work I'd done. You wash today, you know? They just, oh, hello, Mr. Lloyd. I'd go in the office, get coffee. I'd go in the office and make coffee. Amen. I was faithful. For eight years, I worked there. I liked my job. I liked the people I worked for. I liked getting that paycheck every other week. <laughs> Amen. But here, I thought about, you know, as we were pretty close. Amen. Let me see here. It says in uh, Hebrews 11 and uh, verse um, 3, it says, Though through faith we understand that the worlds are framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offer unto God a more excellent sacrifice and Cain. Now, Cain, uh, Abel offered up a sacrifice to please God. Cain offered up a sacrifice of the ground, of the things that he planted. He grew. That didn't please God. But you know what? God didn't say, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just going to kill you right now, Cain. But he told him no. He said, why are you so rough? Why are you so upset? Amen. He said, you know that uh, if you... Keep fooling around, so to speak. Your sin's going to kill you. But he was an arrogant person. And wind up killing his brother. Jealousy is crueler than the grave. Jealousy will cause you to do a lot of things. He was jealous of Abel because he found favor with God. You would think, hey, I ought to try that. Maybe I'll find favor with God. But no, he killed him. Amen. I thought about, uh, about old Abraham. It said, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out, out into a place which he should have to receive for inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whether he went. Now, you imagine being in the country being 75 years old, 
And all of a sudden, God spoke to you. Say, hey, buddy, you need to get out of here. You need to get away from your family. You need to get away from this country. I've got a better plan for you. Oh, Abraham didn't quit. Amen. He, uh, he had faith in God. When he told those men that went with him, he said, you boys just wait here. Me and the lad's going to go yonder and worship. Amen. And they did worship. Hey, God, God had a ram in the bush. Amen. Spared that boy's life. Amen. He come down off from that hill. Can you imagine... Being there all tied up, that wood underneath of him. His dad got his hand, a knife in his hand, and a fire in the other hand. You know, fixing to set the thing on fire and stab his son. Can you imagine what he felt like when he came off of that mountain? He probably felt like <laughs> spared me, Amen, and blessed him. Abraham was blessed. Thank God. He didn't, he didn't wonder. Lot wasn't that blessed. Lot, a man, thought he didn't need God. He wanted something. He saw the plains, how beautiful it was. He was thinking about all that money, all that uh, stock that he had. You know, and servants. Went down to Sodom and Gomorrah. Got entangled with them. Became their mayor. His children were married some of those heathens. And then when the angels come to him, he said, hey, you get out of here. We're going to destroy this place. He said, you better get your kids out of here. He went to his kids, and they laughed at him. So we don't believe that, you know. So then he's, they still had to take him by the hand, him and his wife and daughters, and pull him out of Sodom. And come on. And then he said, don't look back. Well, I'm thinking... As a parent, you know, as a mother, we're thinking, oh, my God, my kids are going to be burned up. You know what I mean? And her grandkids. Know that they had grandkids. I guarantee you, and that's why I think, this is my opinion, that she looked back. And when she did, she turned into a pillar of salt. She didn't see what was going on. Amen. But the others went on. But because Lot wasn't like Abraham, he lost his family. Amen. It's sad. If we win the world and lose our family, what have we got? You know, and that sometimes we just feel like, you know, that uh, lots of years, but I'm going to keep hanging on in there as long as I got breath. I'm going to tell them about Jesus. My sister-in-law and daughter went fishing the other day, and I said, hey, the things that come upon this world don't look good. People need to get ready for Jesus. Amen. My brother-in-law, my wife's brother, said, well, I believe in God. That's as far as it goes. Amen. Because he, he got rich on his own, he thinks. But God blessed him. He lost his family, but he got rich. He gave away, away $50,000. He said, you know what? It feels pretty good to give a be able to give some money away. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and his, and his girlfriend, she gives her kids $10,000. Amen. 
but that won't save you. That won't save you. You know what I mean? You can give all the money you want, but it won't save you. Amen. But it'll save you by repenting of your sins. Get baptized in Jesus' name. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Have that attitude. Change. Amen. The one one I often think about is old Enoch. The Bible says he had this testimony. He pleased God. Amen. He walked with for three hundred and sixty some years. He walked with God. The Bible says he had sons and daughters. I guess he did have. Amen. After all that time. He said, but one day, he was walking with God, and he was not. Hey, you know, one of the days, man, when the trumpet sounds, we here, we're going to have to the dead get up first, and they were going to heaven by the grace of God. I want to go to heaven. I don't want to be entangled with things in this old world. Amen. Some things may not be wrong, but I'm not going to take a chance on doing those things. Amen. Because I want to see the lover of my soul. I want to see the one that loved me so much. Amen. Shed his butt on Calvary and tell him this old world, I love you this much. Nobody will ever love you like Jesus. Nobody will ever, amen, be with you. He's closer than a brother. He's there 24-7. Amen. All right, Brother Travis, I'm done. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, on earth I long to be like him. All through life's journey, from earth to glory, I only ask to be like him. Amen. I tell you, it wouldn't hurt all. Amen. Brother Travis, God bless you. I want to see Jesus. Amen. You know, I'm so thankful for the word this morning. I'm thankful for yet another opportunity. And we got about five or so minutes till the children come come down and come in. But I always spend some time in prayer and, you know, making sure we can make our way to see Jesus. Amen. Because I want to see him when he comes. Not just that, but I want to go with him. Amen. I don't want to hear depart. I want to sit here. Well done. Let's spend some time in prayer this morning and ask God to bless us and to let us digest the word today. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you again today, Lord Jesus. And we ask of your merciful King, oh God, Lord. Lead us and guide us and bless us each and every day, oh God, Lord. As we rise up, oh God, Lord. Lord, let us have you upon our mind, oh God. And we lay our head to rest, oh God, Lord. Let us have you on our mind. And every time in between, Lord, we ask of you, God, Lord, be upon our mind, be upon our lips, Lord Jesus. Lord, that we might know of who you would want us to be, oh God, Lord. Who you'd have us speak to, oh God, Lord. Where you would have us go, Lord Jesus. Lord, bless us this day, oh God, as we seek to bless you, oh God. Lord, help us, oh God, root out in our hearts today, oh God, Lord, a determination, oh God, Lord, that we might see you, oh God. Lord, help us be like more like Abraham, oh God, and less like Lot, oh God. Lord, that we might seek after you and seek after a builder, a, a city that is builder is, and maker is God. Lord, instead of a city, oh God, that is built by human hands and tainted by human flesh, oh God. Lord, let us live after you and not of this world, oh God. Lord, we ask you to move in this place today, O oh, King of kings and Lord of lords, O oh God, Lord, we ask you to continue to bless each and every one of us in this day, in this hour, O oh God, Lord, we ask you to move upon us, O oh God. Lord, bless us this day, O oh God, as we seek to bless you, O oh God. Jesus, 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 amen, amen. Feel free to continue to pray. You know, if you need to step out to get a drink of water or whatnot, feel free to do that as well. But we'll get started here in about five or ten more minutes. Amen. Mm -hmm.